survivors, welcome to the State of Decay 2 stream. I'm your host, Jeffrey Card, and we've got a very special stream for you today because we have got Dave Kraus from stackup.org here. Hey there, Dave. Hey, what's going on, everybody? How are you doing tonight? So, or today, I guess, for you guys. It's, we're creeping into the evening for me here on the East Coast. Yeah, we're about three hours different from each other. And uh, so stackup.org is uh, a favorite charity here at the lab. Brant, in particular, uh, who's here with us too, by the way. If I click on him, there he is. Uh, Brant, <laughs> Brant is also a big proponent of it. As you can see, he's got their merch and everything. <laughs> Uh, and so stackup.org is basically, it, it's, it's a charity that is uh, about helping, uh, using the power of video games to help veterans and active duty soldiers who are out there in the field. And actually, I'm not going to do as great a job talking about it. So why don't I hand off to Dave? Uh, <laughs> Dave it. is going to be better. To work. Yeah, so uh, the, the short of it is, you know, Stackup, as, as Jeffrey said, is a military charity. We're supporting active duty and veteran service members through gaming. Um, the whole conceit of the organization is that, you know, there wasn't really anybody uh, in the veteran space leveraging gaming as a, as a mental health resource. So uh, we kind of started doing that. And we have four pillar programs. Uh, we do supply crates, which are basically video game care packages that we send all over the world uh, to both active duty service members, but also folks who are prior service and just maybe need a little bit of a boost. We have air assault trips where we basically pay all the expenses to bring uh, deserving and disabled veterans out to gaming conventions, which uh, Brant and Jeffrey are, are familiar with. We've, we've been able to hang out a number of times. Yep. I'm sure some stories will come up at some point during the stream. Uh, we have our stacks, which are <laughs> local volunteer teams all over the US. We got a couple international as well. Uh, and these are just uh, both military and civilian uh, supporters that kind of come together, uh, you, you know, leveraging that shared language of, of gaming to kind of just lean on each other, hang out, do cool things together. Uh, last, certainly not least, is our Overwatch program. Uh, one of the things you know we've always talked about is kind of the organic approach to mental health. Uh, basically, rather than beating folks over the head with, hey, do you need to talk to somebody? Do you need to talk to somebody? We've always found there to be a lot of value in just creating a place where people want to be and creating the kind of environment where people will feel comfortable letting you know if something's bothering them, right? Um, and we've had some success with that, but also we felt it was important to, to wear, have an area where we wear it on our sleeve. And we say, hey, look, if you're struggling, come to our community, let us know you want to talk to somebody and we're going to, we're going to be all over it. And so we've got a whole dedicated team of peer-to-peer uh, -peer mental health uh, providers that will 24-7, 365, uh, anybody coming into, the, into our Discord server needs to chat. We've got folks ready, uh, willing to take that on. So it's uh it's real cool and again all of it is built around gaming and the nerdiness of the geek culture kind of stuff that we're all super into so yeah i, I really love it. i mean it's it's done by veterans by people who really understand uh you know like the, the needs of the folks that they're serving and uh, so I, we have a lot of respect for, for for the work that they do and so we wanted to do a stream uh with dave and so we've actually got uh, we've got a game up and running right now. Uh, so, but while over the course of this stream, I'm, I'm going to keep reminding folks that uh, stackup.org, uh, they, they're always, uh, you know, fundraising. They're always looking for, for donations and support. And so anything that you folks can do in our audience uh, to, he to help this organization, we would absolutely love to, uh, to, to, have, con to, to, to have brought you uh, into a place where you, where you understand what they do and you realize the value of, of, uh, of supporting uh, this organization. So... Anyway, yeah, and hey, we yeah. we appreciate you guys a whole lot too, and um, I, lots of cool comments in chat. Appreciate all of you very very much. Uh, I know we have some of our own in there as well, so definitely got uh, a good mix of, of folks whose names I recognize and, and a lot of folks whose names I don't. So appreciate appreciate you guys giving me some time to join you. Cool. All right. Well, so uh, what we've been talking about doing so far is uh, first off, there is a uh, there's an infestation down here, down south of my Noodle New base that I've created. We, uh, traditionally, we've been playing this long-running community uh, that's in in a nightmare zone, uh, but it's right coming to the end of its life, and so I should probably just finish it off. Uh, and so, so, so we've actually started with a new community that we haven't played on the stream before. Uh, it's brand new, and so we're just barely building up our infrastructure. We don't even have a uh, the ability to make toolkits yet. And so part of one of our goals is to get rid of this infestation. Another one of our goals is Brant uh, has got one of the best, was it for materials, Brant? One of the best scavenging sites for materials? Yep. 
Okay, so Brant is uh, is gonna guide us to to one of those spots. Gonna take it. We're gonna take advantage of his expertise. Uh, and then I don't know. Maybe maybe uh, we'll be on the lookout for some uh, plague uh, some plague samples. We can give them to uh, to our first allied community here. And I think that's about it. So why don't we get started? Um, we desperately need a repair kit for the car yeah that's true yeah our car our car is in really bad shape and unfortunately because this is a dread zone cars are not thick on the ground right now so are we going to the uh do you want to hit the infestation first because it's just really close okay i've got it marked on the map i think yep yeah let's do that first and i think that there's probably a plague heart somewhere in the area we'll probably encounter some plague zeds if we can get some uh some samples a couple samples for that for that enclave that'll make me happy too and again, for anybody who is just joining us now, uh, you know we've got Dave Krause here, our guest. Uh, he's from StackUp.org, uh, and so he is. Uh, you know, we're, we're basically we want to raise awareness uh, uh, for people in our audience about this charity. It's a it's a charity for uh, for veterans and active duty soldiers using the power of gaming to uh, as a mental health resource and also to sort of you know bring people together and uh, and make them happy under the under difficult circumstances, like the circumstances we're under right now. Uh, we have uh, decided we're going to go out for an infestation for some reason. Get off me, you zombie. So my challenge right now is to not only fight zombies, but make sure you two stay on camera the whole time. <laughs> oh, dude, come on. That's that's unrealistic, I think, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> okay, we got one plague sample. Did you guys grab any plague samples? I did not. Okay, looks like we got the what one, then. I guess while we're here, we should see what's uh, what's yeah. around in this room. Looks like we might have yeah, even more fuel. I don't have any samples on the ground, so. Okay, well we've got That's the good. one. That'll be good. Brent says he's taking us on a nice long trip. So, uh, oh Brent, there's a there's a box for you in the main room here. Cut some zombies out here. Oh yeah, I also uh, invited some zombies. I hope you guys don't mind. Thank you. I'll just let them deal with the zombies while I quietly search this uh, uh, this cooler over here. I'm just gonna let Dave do it. Do it, man. I bet this zombie feels like a real idiot. Oh yeah, Brent. Right as uh, right as they were jumping out the out the window, they would jump right back in. So right over here, over here in the bathroom, there's a box for each of you. I think is this is a bathroom. Yeah, this is it's kind of a big bathroom actually. I'm kind of impressed. Like they got the oh, they got the water heater and the laundry in here. Now I'm less impressed. It actually feels a little bit. Uh, uh, it's kind of a crappy bathroom actually. <laughs> Come to think of it. <laughs> You pulled a 180 on this bathroom. Real yeah, I, quick. well, I was like, oh yeah, it's so big and roomy. But I'm like, oh, it's roomy because we've just crammed every appliance in the in the house into it. I put all the stuff in this room. It's <laughs> well, not crappy. It's useful. No, no, it's useful. It's use. I'm, I'm not. I'm not criticizing the uh, the art. It's of based it. on <laughs> Brant's real bathroom, and he hand plates every everything in there. So you do well to watch your, watch your tone. I will. Wa I will absolutely watch my tone. <laughs> the, the square footage in that bathroom is about three times larger than my apartment, so <laughs> total fantasy. Yeah, I'm just. Is this, I'm, what, a, is yeah. this what people in apartments think how, bathrooms and houses look like? <laughs> yeah, it's right. been so long since I've been to my ex wife's <laughs> house that uh, um, I forgot what my own bathroom looked like. <laughs> Okay, so uh, do we want to head to that site that you were calling out, Brant, as being like a fancy place to get materials? Um, maybe. I'm gonna stop in the trailer park here and look oh, no. for look for uh, repair kits because we need it. Badly. Oh yeah. Okay. Yeah. Since we haven't seen a car, um, we're gonna need one. Yeah, I I was going through my entire. Uh... Uh, my entire map, and I don't think any place that I've been so far, I don't think any of those places have cars. Oop. Well, Dave, I'm so glad you could join us today. I've known I've known Dave for what is it, five years, maybe more? Yeah, dude, it's been yeah, um, yeah, five years, maybe a little over now. Yeah, it's been a while. And, uh, yeah, actually, yeah, been, definitely over. I pretty much when we're at, whenever we're at a, at a convention, I pretty much stalk these guys. And they're easy to see because they're always wearing their their red shirts. Yeah. Um, and uh, I follow them around like a puppy dog mostly. <laughs> but uh, this year, I the stars came, the stars aligned, and and uh, a group of you guys was able to come to my birthday party, and it was the best birthday 
I think I've ever had. Except for the hangover, which I still have a headache from, and that's been months now. Hey, Brent, yeah, there's some boxes for you over here where I am, Brent. Yeah, no, that was that was an awesome freaking time, and those guys had such a such a blast, man. It's I don't know, man. You, you guys have been you guys have been you know riding with us for since day one. You know, like I was telling uh, I was telling some of our aerosols at that at that party. You know, like I remember, I think you were you were one of the first like two uh, industry people I ever met, right? And so I was all freaking doe-eyed and my first convention and oh man this is this is so incredible hey brant over and, here uh what where oh just brant brant uh, has got some blue oh, boxes gotcha. over here oh i'm fixing the car oh, right yeah. now i found a uh, i found a repair box oh so. good jam and yeah so meeting you back then was really cool and then you being one of the you know one of the first people at follow-on conventions to kind of call me out of a crowd make me feel all special uh, and it's, yeah, man, it's, you're one of the, you're on the real short list of people that are like, I'm just dying to see every time we go to a convention. It's funny though. Every time I see Shanghai six, I have to reintroduce myself. <laughs> hey, yeah, that's nature of the beast, man. <laughs> it's so funny. Cause like for me at the time, I was still new to undead labs when we first, when we first met. And, uh, to me, I was still strunk, starstruck by undead labs as well. Uh, so, so I, you yeah. know, I, I think it was one of my earliest conventions, uh, with with Undead Labs when we when we actually uh, met for the first time and so I was I was just as excited and and I was excited to be you know to be meeting you folks and and you know the with, with the work that you guys are doing I mean we're making a video game and sure video games are neat and all but what you guys do with video games feels so much more important I don't know man yeah I, I think everything has its place right because I'd have I'd have been I'd have lost my mind a long time ago if it wasn't for uh for these video games. <laughs> It's, it's definitely been helpful, uh, you know, for me, like, during, you know, all this quarantine stuff, like, you know, just sort of the pattern of your life changing up, having something like, like video games that can stay consistent, you know, that, you know, no matter what I'm doing, where I'm doing it, the game world is the same, and it's, and it's, it's comforting. It. Yeah, that was it for me, uh, through, you know, through my whole career, and then, uh, for those of you who can't see, I guess, yeah, the camera is somewhat limited here, but you can see, not, was not born missing a left hand, that was a, that was a parting gift from the country of Cambodia. Oh, wow. And yeah, man, two years at Walter Reed was very much like, all right, cool. Everything is on its end right now in my life. Where, where do I have some stability? You know, so I had, I had my wife, I had my, my one, my first, you know, my oldest uh, child at the time. I, we hadn't had our youngest yet, but you know, so I had my wife, my daughter and I was like, okay, cool. I got that going for me and that was pretty rad. Uh, but you know, the wee hours of the evening, being able to, being able to hop on, hop on a game for a while and just tune out pretty yeah. pretty powerful it's pretty important part of my recovery so well and, and your guys story uh the first time i heard it what you guys are doing it it uh it certainly changed my life i am so incredibly happy that that i'm doing something that's that in a small way supports your guys's uh your guys's efforts yeah, so, You're in a rush to beat this truck back up, huh? Yeah, so uh, we should, I was running over armored guys for Jeffrey. Yeah, so I just <laughs> okay. got uh, the bounty that, that that we were trying to get. Brant found four. I needed four more armored Zeds, and Brant just found okay. four armored Zeds, and he just beat up the truck to get me my bounty. And so that's why I was like, yes. <laughs> well worth it. Well worth gonna, it. I am about to show you uh, a a really good shortcut here. Uh, is this another car destroying shortcut? Uh, no, the car will be fine. I'm sure. Just settle down. <laughs> <laughs> Woohoo! Look at that. <laughs> every like a glove. <laughs> every shred of glass <laughs> on this car shattered at once. Brandon, that's the only, that's the only reason why I was looking for a repair kit. <laughs> it was just so you could do that without blowing this thing up. Yep. <laughs> you know what? Worth it. I'll take it. That was pretty spectacular. Okay, so now, Brent, you were going to be taking us to one of the uh, one of the best places to scavenge for materials in Providence Ridge. Is that right? Yep, it's the scourge of Providence Ridge, too, according to its original inhabitants. Oh, it's, it's a new housing development. Everyone hates those. That's right. Except the people who move into them, they think they're great. So, okay, so looks like we're headed up to the uh, to the northwest edge of the map. While we're en route... If Brent hits oh. anything, 
this truck is toast. I am an, I'm an excellent driver. Yeah. A stiff breeze is gonna oh, oh, <laughs> turn this thing into a fireball. Oh, stop sign. In real life, I got rid of my car. I don't own a car anymore, so this is the only driving I get to do anymore. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> when, I, when I come to Florida, I'm gonna ask to borrow your car, though. I'll we'll, let you. We'll see, we'll see how, how good our friendship is. Yeah. <laughs> Perfect. Nice. I gotta, I'm gonna get out and see if this one's in better condition. Uh, see if we need to move any... Uh... It looks like it's not smoking, at least. Yep, we're switching. Do you right. have anything right. in the back? Uh, we have yeah, tons of stuff in, in the back. Of stuff. So I'll grab the rucksack, and then there's a bunch of gas in there, too. It probably needs some of the gas immediately, actually. actually I've got some uh, I've got some gas in my inventory right now. I'm going I'm to fuel it up. Alrighty. Oh, man. Gas in a Picard takes so long. Somebody should get on that. Yeah. You'd think the devs would do something about that at some point. <laughs> Grab All right. Last tank. There Just we go. hold on to that one because the thing's full. <clears throat> Wait, should should I be driving this car in tandem with you guys? Oh, here's a good question. Um, uh, I can hop on and grab that other truck. I mean, worst case scenario, it explodes, right? Yeah, I mean that would be terrible for the stream if the yeah, car would. exploded. Um, <laughs> we got a question from Fred Garvin. Besides SOD, what games are popular with the stack up players? What do oh, you guys like to play? Uh, me personally, I'm I'm a I'm a bit of an odd duck in that, like I'm playing like Dragon's Dogma right now for the first time. Nice. So, yeah, I'm just I'm catching up on on old stuff, uh, but I really enjoyed uh, like the Resident Evil 3 remake, and I'm a big Final Fantasy 14 player. We've got a few folks on staff that play that. Uh, a couple of a couple of our folks playing some Fallout 76. Uh, you know, our founder, he's big into survival games and stuff like that. Uh, and he'll generally he'll he'll play just about anything, uh, at least for long enough that he feels like he understands the game, or at least the conversation happening around. He wants to he wants to know what people are talking about. Yeah, that's so he can kind speak of intelligently. That's really similar to the way that, that that I approach video games. You know, I I have like my personal stream where I basically stream a different game like for every day of the week, and it's mostly mm -hmm. so that so that you know we can have conversations it's mostly so that like when you know when i'm when we're discussing new ideas new features or changes we can make to the game you know i really want to be super aware of all the different things that are going on in the industry all the all the all the crazy weird innovative stuff that indie yep. games are doing and stuff like that and i imagine for somebody who for anyone who you know for whom video games is part of their life's work you know having that that base of knowledge is really important yeah absolutely so i did um yeah, so that's and that's not me. I'm I'm glad that that Steve is always like on top of that stuff, because me, uh, I don't hear about it until it's already a thing or whatever. I just I'm not I don't have my my ears cl as low to the ground as he does. A lot of times I'm lost in my, you know, Final Fantasies and my you know Metal Gears and stuff like that. And that's that's where I live as a gamer. So I put a great deal of attention into Final Fantasy VII Remake, got through that, and it was like, what next? And I was like, you know, I've had Dragon's Dogma 2, or Dragon's Dogma sitting on my shelf for PS3 since uh, early 2014. And I was like, well, oh, it was eight bucks on Steam, so I bought that, and turns out, that game's awesome. I've heard really good things about it. That's one of the few that I haven't played, but it's uh, it, it's supposed to be really good. But it, yeah. It's great. Love Ooh, it. I got some circuitry. Uh, but no so room for it. So this was... This game was actually the uh, the stack up. Uh, this is our Corona kickoff game. Oh yeah. It was me. Oh yeah, man. We had a, at any given time there would be four of us running around in somebody's game. It was my game or Scatch or Sam or you know Boss Man or Clue. But yeah, at any given time, th this is what we were playing for for a solid two weeks. Wow. It's like all day long. It was it was a blast too. That was when I you know I finally. You know, beat it and started getting the the perks from the different, you know, leaders leaders and all that yeah. stuff, and really deep dove and freaking love this game, man. <laughs> oh, well, thank you. Uh, I just noticed my character is exhausted right now, uh, so it might be necessary for us to head home pretty soon. Except there's this plague heart right next door, and it's the first plague heart. Oh, we might be able to it? handle it. Oh yeah, we can take this. Let me. Uh, I'm just gonna it's drop off this. Dread, uh, it's in the dread zone. I've got to. I got to drop off this rucksack real quick, and then. Do you have uh, enough influence for uh, an outpost? 
Uh, you know what? I might. Let me see. How much impulse do I have? Uh, 239. In a dread zone, is that going to get us one? I think we need 250 minimum. So let's. Uh... Let's definitely take that play card. Oh boy. Okay. <laughs> I've got one pipe bomb. Nice. I've got zero explosives. So I've got I've got all we need. I just need you guys to keep zombies from killing me when I'm doing this. Oh, what are you doing? I've got um, four uh, fuel bombs or something. Oh, fuel bombs. Okay. So I've got my pipe bomb. Uh, so I oh zombies. We're off to the races now. Oh, they're everywhere. I'm using my wyvern sword, by the way, which I think is in the uh, pawn shop pack. I'm about to throw, uh, what do I say, fire in the hole? Okay. Put a whole, put a whole mag to this. Uh, there we did. There we go. Nicely done. Okay, cool. Uh, gonna make sure that the gas has time to clear. And then... no, oh, no! No! no that, that didn't go well. Which one of you ran into it? <laughs> it was uh, me, it was me. Jeffrey, nice. I did too. <laughs> we both did? Awesome. Ooh, I can pack. <laughs> And an M1A. See if you can uh, claim this outpost. Okay, yeah. Let me. Uh, let's see. I should. I should use some of my existing healing stuff so that I can pick up more. And that's it. Oh, oh! I got boxes of stimulants. That's. Um, can you use that? Can't I? Oh wait, no, no. That's not. No, it's coffee that keeps you going. That's right. Yeah. All right. Well, okay, why am I wasting time searching stuff? Let's, um, where's the claim table for this thing? Is it downstairs? Right here. Oh, you upstairs. got it? Upstairs? Upstairs claim table. That's, uh, oh, it was yeah, right, like, it's right next like to where it. I was. That's great. Oh, sorry. I like to mix it up a little bit. We've got a downstairs room I need to clear real quick. All clear. There we go. Ah! Well, out of the way. Never that. I couldn't even get up normal stairs by myself, so you know I wasn't able to get around a person. Okay, yeah, so this would have required 400 usually, and yeah, we've got uh, 499, so we're good. All right. Nice. So if anybody needs to drop anything off, change characters, whatever, we got it here. So I, I'm gonna keep my wyvern sword because that thing is sweet. Oh, finally, I got a pack of emery boards. Yeah, so this 762 is going to be pretty good. If I I want to get a decent uh, suppressor for it though before I start using it, so I think I'm going to. Keep... I'll give you this. Uh, I'll give you this deodorant I got. You can have yourself a spa day. That, uh, yeah. <laughs> that sounds great. We, we, I need it. Look at those things. They haven't been manicured <laughs> ever, actually. <laughs> I've been. Uh, I am. I have. I have. I became a nail biter uh, <laughs> seven years ago when I lost the ability to accurately clip these things. Oh. And uh, I'm not sure if I'm grateful for that or not. On the one <laughs> hand, it's less, you know, in one way, it's less work, but so it just I... means my nails always look like crap. <laughs> so I've got, uh, see, I'm, I'm going to try to pull some more stuff out of the trunks of these vehicles. And I'm, I dropped oh. some stuff that I found for you, Jeffrey. Like just dropped it on the ground up there? Yep. All right. I'm just going to make sure we've got... I just leave my crap everywhere. He does, dude. You're like a, you're like a litter. Like yep. If I could build, if I could build my own, like structures in this game, what I would do is I would build a pen, that would be like Brant's dumping ground. Like Brant, yep. everything that you want to leave on my property, put it in the pen, so I don't have to go <laughs> taking laps around the, uh, the, the base here. I'm so, like pig yeah. pen. <laughs> <laughs> So um, just real quick, because we've been playing for 20 minutes, we probably got some new folks in the audience. I just want to point out that we are playing here with Dave Krause from StackUp.org. So StackUp.org is a charity for veterans uh, and for active duty soldiers. That uh, they do a lot to you know to share uh, you know the video games with people who need them, who could you know benefit from them. And uh, we really love this charity, and so we really will hope that folks who are watching the stream or who are watching it later on YouTube uh, will will go down, check out StackUp.org, see all the good stuff that they do, and consider donating because uh, you know they they're yeah. doing a lot of really great work, and they could use all of our help. Yeah, actually, um, really appreciate it, Dave. I'd like to talk to you guys about um, about possibly doing one of those charity streams. <laughs> Too easy, man. Too easy. We've got uh, actually, I think a couple of our. Uh couple of our folks who run that are in chat um but 
you know, that's definitely something I can get you connected with them whenever you want, man. You just say the word. Pretty easy. We actually, uh, I think we have a, I know, I, I think I shot the link over to you, but we actually have a page on the Donor Drive website. If anybody's familiar with Donor Drive, that's where, you know, we're directing folks uh, look, who are either looking to donate or looking to host charity streaming uh, uh, fundraisers, stuff like that. Um, and it's, I, I don't have the, what is it, donordrive.stackup or stackup.donordrive, I can't remember, but I know I sent you the link earlier. And so our, our big call to arms fundraising event is fully underway right now. May is one of the, the two months over the course of the year where we really try and make some noise about what we've got going on. And we had a lot of streamers um, out there doing fundraisers and stuff like that, which is awesome. And, you know, this has been an interesting, obviously been an interesting couple of months for everybody. So it's, you know, it's been it's been really humbling to see how many folks are are still wanting to come out and, and donate money and their time. And it's been it's been really cool. And I'm not really sure that that I'd be able to choose the right English words to articulate how that how that's made us feel. But it, it's been very cool and inspiring. So I missed most of that fireworks show. Uh, speaking of making noise, <laughs> oh, well. so I feel bad. I got I caught there right at the tail end of it. Oh, there's nothing here. Darn it. Okay, so I need to go back into that house. I need to grab those plague samples because we should probably head back towards our base to be able to deliver all these rucksacks and start building up our our stuff. Wait a minute, is this sounds good? Did yeah. Let's just move the cars. And we need to we need to get this. We need to get this red truck. Actually, oh, somebody repaired the red truck. I did. Yeah, I know there were a couple of repair kits in that plague heart. So uh, nice. yeah, so repaired it. I'm just going to grab these plague samples. Oh, somebody had a question in there that I wanted to speak to. Uh, fantastic, oh, yeah. Mr. Fox. Says, Dave, what kind of adaptive controllers are there for disabled vets? That is a fantastic question. So there's a lot of cool stuff out there. And, and everybody, the, the interesting thing about designing hardware or adapting hardware, um, you know, for is that everybody's disabilities are so much different. Um, for me, I found that the, actually, let me, I'll drive this truck. I'll, I'll hold it up in a minute, but. Go ahead, let's get to the let's get to the base. But so I use the Xbox One Elite controller, uh, and that works pretty well for me. My biggest issue is you know missing the left hand. I don't really have access to those left triggers. And so having the two bumpers underneath my uh, underneath my right hand are really, really critical. And the fact that I can use a long, uh, long throw kind of analog stick on the left side, it's great. And what I do is I actually have a little 3D printed doodad that I put on the d-pad of the controller and just with that alone i'm able to with the residual limb you know with, the, with my left stump i can get to everything i need to on the left side and all the triggers on my right uh the elite controller is great uh, i found for a lot of folks who have motor issues uh either loss of use or loss of when we're just talking about one hand um as you get a little bit further from that and i guess it's funny it's going to sound like i'm being paid by microsoft to say this i promise i'm not uh, but the Xbox Adaptive Controller uh, is one of the coolest things in the world that I've ever had the privilege of being involved with. And so we really kind of designed that to be a platform from which anybody could solve any accessibility problem. And I think it succeeds in that regard. The trade-off is that it's not going to do everything for you outside of the box. So you can plug in an XAC and get yourself all sorts of custom switches. And whatever your needs are, this thing's going to be able to meet it uh, within, you know, virtually anything. There's always there's always a fringe case somewhere. I don't I don't ever like speaking in absolutes. But then uh, on the PC side, there's stuff like Quad Stick or you know XPad or Joy to Key things where you can remap virtually anything. Quad Stick is phenomenal for quadriplegia. So anyway, sorry, I could go yeah. on for days. Oh, days no, this days. Is, there's a lot this is... of cool options out there. You know, and hearing about this stuff is great. We've had, uh, you know, Microsoft has got, you know, a program that, you know, that basically puts you know, developers, developers like us in contact with folks who, uh, you know, who are play games, you know, with, uh, with now, a do variety you through, of dis different disabilities. So yeah. do you guys go through Inclusive Tech Lab for that? Uh, yeah, we, we go through the, yeah. these processes. They're called uh, Inclusive Design Sprints. Uh, they're they're yep. pretty... I think they're all related. Um, but yeah, we, we have folks come in and they basically, you know, they talk us through their experience with games and, and, and let us know a lot of things we normally, uh, you know, uh, just on our own we're not, would not have ever come up with about, you know, how it, uh, so many different individuals adapt games in so many different ways uh, to, to, the, to their needs. And uh, it's, one of the, it's fascinating. One of the coolest things that I learned, so before, oh, I'm out of gas, homies. 
Let's oh. see if I got any, anything. I think we took all the gas out of the back of this truck. There should be. There should uh, be. Oh, no, I've got one. I've got one. We're good. So when I, I cut my teeth in the charity space doing adaptive controllers and stuff, that was how oh. uh, I ended up working with Microsoft on the Xbox adaptive controller and meeting all them folks when they were first standing up the inclusive tech lab. Uh, and so that's kind of what I did because that was my interest. Like I'm a big gamer. I had, I had linked up with a, with a guy uh, who was doing all sorts of modified like adapted items. And part of the things that he was doing were the occasional video game controller. So I was like, well, um, I think the rest of what you're doing is cool, but this particular thing, I want to be really as, as involved with as I can be. And so I'd had a little bit of experience with working on electronics and soldering and all that stuff. So tried to tried to put my skills to work and learn a thing or two. And it was really awesome. And one of the coolest things I learned is that, um, you know, not only is everybody's, you know, injury or disability level different, but the way that they have adapted their own use is different. I have a friend who she lost both of her arms above the elbow and she can, she can use, she can almost use a hundred percent of an unmodified controller with her feet. I can't wow. even come close to that. Wow. Um, now she, she uses modded stuff um, now just because it's more convenient. But um, I, I had a guy who, had, who I thought I know exactly what you need because your injuries are almost identical to mine. And uh, turned out it really wasn't as comfortable for him to use a stump. So I ended up checking in on him a few months later and he was using his chin for the left thumbstick. Oh, and wow. he was playing Siege. <laughs> nice. He was playing Siege and dude was getting it in. He was pretty good. <laughs> wow. And uh, that w I think that was the first time I saw somebody taking something where I was so certain that I knew exactly how he was going to use it and I knew how it was going to work for him. And then he made me feel like an idiot because I'm looking at him like, oh, this isn't at all how I thought you were going to use that. But turns out it really worked for him. Yeah, I mean, that's the main thing that, so, that, that that I got from the, the times when we've, you know, had these you know discussions with folks is just like how unpredictable it is what's going to work for who. You know, that, that yeah. each person, uh, each situation is entirely different. And, and people, you know, people find a way. People, when people love something like games, they will find a way to play a game. And they will, you know, they'll do all kinds of things to make it work. And the more aware we are of just the diversity of things that people are doing, the more we can sort of try to meet people halfway and, and, and provide them yep. with, with, with tools that they can use in whatever way they need to, you know, to, to adapt. <laughs> and that's, yeah, I've done a fair bit of accessibility consulting now, I guess you'd say. Um, you know, in the industry, nothing, nothing terribly like I'm, this is not me patting myself on the back, but I've had a couple of cool opportunities to do that. And what I've tried to, what I've tried to convey to developers and, and platform holders and stuff is like, look, man, like be less worried about trying to solve somebody's problem for them and more and more concerned with just leaving your hardware or your software open to them implementing their own solutions. Yeah. And a lot of times that's as simple as saying, Hey, can you remap controls in your game? Uh, and that's going to solve a lot of problems or, you know, simple stuff that you can do. Yeah, that was one of the um, one of the major uh, uh, sort of things that that uh, the original design director of State of Decay 2 was really passionate about was making sure that even on console, our game was fully remappable. And now a lot of the um, a lot of the controls in this game are very complex and they overlap in weird ways. And sometimes it can mm -hmm. be really difficult to uh, to find a really good you know, like so, some of the uh, some of the uh, occasions when you might want to remap the controller, there's there can be some awkwardness there. But we tried really, really yeah. hard. <laughs> to, to no, you guys did a good job. Good. And uh, somebody in chat mentioned that it's nice that you guys support mixed inputs, and that's another huge one. The fact that I can use my my left arm here to walk while using my mouse to aim if I choose to, that's oh. a big deal. Uh, yeah. And you'd be that. surprised how often that's not. Cause I don't, and I don't even know if that's something you guys intentionally did. I, I don't imagine it no. was. Well, Forgive no, we, we did assumption. actually, yeah, we did make it, uh, we did intentionally make it, it was like, it was like a, a, a ground level UX necessity that people could just switch back and forth easily with controllers without having to go through any kind of like uh, rigmarole. Yeah, and so just hit, whatever input like the game gets, it just reads it, right? In fact, that's we, awesome. We actually have a fair number of people at the, at the studio uh, who, you know, who for whatever reason, they're, they're, you know, while they're developing, they use a mouse and a controller half and half while they're, while they're developing. I know so uh, I have they some They would have noticed that, that as a problem. When they're, when they're in a vehicle, they pick up the controller. And when they're on foot, they're a keyboard and mouse. Mm. Yeah, I can see that. Uh, by the way, so I am one scrap of circuitry short of being able to upgrade my, uh, my ah. mechanics. That's it. You're getting one circuitry from me. Yep, that sounds good. <laughs> one circuitry Brand's sounds awesome. Grant's all over it. Rant's about to poop a circuitry onto the ground. That's how that's how I do. There we go. Wow. God, I've been waiting to pass that. Um, 
Dave, uh, there's yes. a question for you from the community, and Hit me. and if you feel comfortable answering, go for it. If not, but uh, the question was, what was your mission in Cambodia? Oh, so I was uh, so I was at EOD Tech by trade. Those of you who are who are veterans yourselves know what that means. For the rest of you, if you're if you're not familiar with the term, it just means I was a bomb squad guy in the Marines, and uh, we support a lot of humanitarian demining missions in. Uh, well, all over the world, but Cambodia, Laos, and Vietnam are still very, very heavily mined countries. Now, we don't go over there to dig things up and work on it. That's that's not our job over there. It's Our, our job is more of an international relations and uh, cross-training opportunity. So we were over there uh, doing classroom instruction with Cambodian civilian and military deminers. Uh, so it was pretty awesome, but you know, we had a lot of downtime in between classes, and there was an individual... Uh, who himself is a retired Marine, who is running a, what we call, there, I don't know if there is a name for it. There's only a couple in the world, uh, and he had started them. But basically a high explosive recycling facility uh. where, yeah, so these, these countries don't have budgets for dem demolition materials. So some stuff is safe to move, some stuff isn't. If it's safe to move, they transport it back to their facilities, um, extract the explosive compounds from it, and then recast it as demolition materials. So if something isn't safe to move, they can destroy it in place. And so it's basically they Cambodia allows like they don't have to spring for demo materials. Yeah, it's all the facility takes care of it. Let's start heading so towards we that were, um, uh, mission site, by the way. Yeah, let's go. Well, which vehicle are we taking now? Uh, the black one's got all the fuel. In the you have of your plague samples that you need. Oh, did I put those in my inventory? Yes, I do. I've got them. Anyway, keep telling so, us about uh, that. I just wanted to get. No, yeah, yeah, all good. So, uh, oh, hats, I see FMF Corman. What's up, brother? So, um, yeah, anyways, so we, we had some, a lot of downtime, and during that downtime, I was like, hey, you know, we're going to be disassembling some rounds and stuff like that. Pretty pretty standard EOD work, to be honest. Mm -hmm. uh, so we're like, yeah, sure. We If, we, if we're if we not in the classroom, yeah, we'd love to. We'd love to come uh, work in the facility and just do do what EOD techs do and uh, kind of just had a bad day in the office. We'd spent the morning working on a bunch of stuff successfully, uh, went to lunch. I shaved my mustache, which is... You know, I, I found it to have a, a Samson-like effect on me because I oh. shaved my mustache, came back from uh, lunch, was working on a round, and just had it go off on me. Uh, it was me and a couple other guys, so we all got hurt pretty bad. Thankfully, nobody died. And ever since that day, I've been cursed uh, with half a mustache. So, <laughs> Sheesh, wow. I credit the shaving of the mustache to uh, to my downfall that, that day. But, yeah, and, that, wow. and that's really what it comes down to. Is, you know, we It's a dangerous job. You know, you can... It's definitely one of those jobs where you can you can do everything right, um, or do everything you know procedurally by the numbers, and, and still just have things go sideways. And that's what it was. Uh, but thankfully, we had uh, you know the, the the small team. There was only about six of us. The small team we had out there. Everybody was. We were all on the same page. We all knew each other, and so everybody kind of sprung to. And none of us lost consciousness. So even though me and a couple of the other guys were were hurt real bad, we were able to at least communicate fairly clearly. So it wow. worked out. Wow, I mean, it sounds like you're, I mean, your whole team sounds like a bunch of pros, and I'm really impressed with it. I mean, because that, kind of, that kind of work, I mean, somebody's got to do it, right? To, to, to you know, yeah, take, yeah. take all these dangerous things that are that are left over from military actions from ages ago and, and, and try to turn it into something positive and something useful. And, yeah, even how... Da oh, I mean, it's, it's good stuff, man. I, uh, no, job, uh, no job in the world I, I think I'd rather be doing, save maybe this one, right? <laughs> uh, this is right. the closest I ever got, because... I, well, you know, two years at, at uh, Walter Reed recovering from my injuries and really kind of wrestling with, am I going to find something that, that hits me the same way? I mean, how did I end up driving? Yeah, I don't know. I, I'm like, I'm looking at like Brant's in like, Brant, are we going somewhere or not? <laughs> Brant, this is your, this is yours. Take the wheel, man. <laughs> yeah, so who, uh, we were commenting on this, I, I think, we during the last... Uh... I'm like, Brant, what are we doing here? Yeah, and, was, and then I realized, nope, I ended up I was fascinated it. by the story, my friend. I didn't care if we were driving or not. <laughs> fair enough. Well, fair enough. I appreciate that. It means a lot. I don't consider myself that captivating, so... Uh, but yeah, man, so it was, you know, two years of trying to figure out, you know, who, who Dave the man was outside of... You know, I knew who Dave the Marine was. And I'm real, real fortunate that, you know, when I met Steve, you know, at the time I did where he was just hanging out at Walter Reed looking to give away some Xboxes and stuff. And I didn't really need anything, but I, I was real curious to hear more about what he was doing. And over time that that led to us, you know, me be able to work with him uh, in the launch of Stack Up. And it's been 
It's, I, I've had a lot of dreams come true since that day, so it's, it's been really cool. Yeah, it really and I feels, get to hang out yeah. with guys like you now. So I mean, this is uh, this ain't bad. No, no, no. Well, we get to hang not, out with you. That's the dream, right? That's it. <laughs> I remember. I remember saying to myself, you know, one of these days, the name, the name Brant Fitzgerald is just burned into my brain, and I, there, somewhere in this world, there is a Brant Fitzgerald, and one day I'd like to meet him. <laughs> All right. Here it is. For yeah. for all you guys to know, he's pulling my leg really hard right now. Um, <laughs> Dave, come on, man, you're awesome. Dave, there's uh, Yankee eleven six seventy seven says, "Hey, Dave, how can I help build a team here in Knoxville, Tennessee?" That is an excellent question. Um, if we have any of our other staff in chat, uh, they can they can speak on this too. But honestly, the the best way to the best place to start is head over to the website, www.stackup.org, and uh, you can go to our program. Up in Brant. And what you're interested in is the Stacks program, which is our, our local volunteer teams all over. Um, so you can go to the, the page on the website for the Stacks program, and there should be a contact request right there embedded on the page that you can just fill out. It's real light. We don't ask, you know, 100 questions. Uh, but go ahead and fill that out, and that'll go right to right to our team, and you'll you know you should have a have a response within you know two business days, generally. Yeah. So really easy, yeah. and we'll your, reach your out to you directly. Is, and yeah, go ahead. Sorry. What's that? I said your website no, is really no. easy to use. Like like when, like when, when we were prepping for the stream, I, I went to look at it and make sure that I knew what I was talking about. And yeah, like everything is really easy to find. Uh, you guys you guys have put together a really pro professional operation there. Not every I take charity. No credit for that. Not every we charity got, in the world is good at this sort of thing. We got another comment. Um, Hensley Halliday says, FMF Corsman, Corman uh, yeah. so, salute to you, my guy. Also been in, been to Cambodia training their combat med medics. So. Oh, awesome. So, yeah, I, depending on where you were at, we were in uh, Kempong, Shenang, and uh, over with CMAC, which is Cambodia Mine Action Center, and a whole bunch of other acronyms and, and all that stuff. But that was pretty rad. And we did it. We had a Corman with us as well, my buddy Alex. And uh, he, that's what he was doing. He was teaching you know, medic stuff. <laughs> and then uh, he had an opportunity to do some real, r very realistic training for those folks once that uh, once that round detonated. Wow, yeah, I'll bet. Um, <laughs> so do you, uh, do you do you speak any Khmer or? Uh... No, no. I In fact, is that the name of the language? I'll I think honest, it is. I don't even know that. I think it's the name of the language. That's what my a Cambodian friend told very, me once very short. 20 years ago. <laughs> I don't know. Yeah. Um, no, unfortunately, I mean, I, I say unfortunately, but it, it was just nature of, we had, we had translators and everything and, and the places we were at, you know, being in Phnom Penh for a few days and even in Kampong Chenang, uh, everybody kind of spoke English. So, um, we kind of got spoiled by that. Yeah, I can see that. We've got, it, it was, it was fun and, and interesting, like trying to, you know, cause we, we tried to make sure we represented, um, like people from a lot of different backgrounds, uh, in the characters of State mm. of Decay 2. And so there's a whole like list of Cambodian names and, uh, and nice. stuff like that. So I had, to, I had to do a bunch of research on like, uh, you know, on, on naming traditions and stuff like that in Cambodia among many other That's different, cool. different cultures I knew very little about. And so it was, it was, it was really interesting. I'm always really interested to hear what kinds of research and what kind of intentionality goes into stuff like that because as a player, um, I don't really put any thought into the, the random generated names or a lot of the features of the characters, right? Unless something looks crazy wonky, right? Then it's like, yeah. oh, what? who's the idiot that uh, came up with this, huh? <laughs> but other than that, it's like when it's one of those types, one of those things in a game that unless it's severely broken, I, I as a player tend to not notice it. And then when somebody says, oh, yeah, I researched Cambodian naming convention. <laughs> uh, it's like, all right, then. Jeez, like, I forget. It's so easy to forget how many layers there are to stuff like this. Well, see, that's that's the thing that's interesting is, like, you know, when, um, when, when somebody tries to do something military in a game, usually they get it at least 10% wrong, if not 100% wrong, right? Sure. And you notice yeah. that every single time, and it dr probably drives you crazy. And then when a game gets it right... Isn't it like a relief? Like, oh my gosh, these guys paid attention. Right. They know. When a game gets it right, I definitely, I definitely notice, and I'm definitely. It's, it's an easy way to impress me. Well, I don't know if it's an easy thing to do, but it's, it's an easy, it's a shortcut to impressing me, right? That said, like, yeah, I've definitely not been the type of guy that's like, these idiots got the ribbon order wrong. Like, that's not, that's not how that's supposed to look. Like, I don't get too twisted about it because I get it. <laughs> I, I imagine, like, if I was making a game about what it's like to be a player in the NFL. Right, there's only so much I could learn through research, right? And yeah. any NFL player would look at that game and be like, 
L listen to this idiot. He thinks that's what it's like. <laughs> also, you have to make it fun for a video game, so I get it. Um, so I don't get I don't get too twisted up about it. But yeah, when a when a dev comes around and does it, Justin, like you can tell that they put the attention in the right place. Like there's certain stuff you have to you have to take liberties with, right? Because it's a game. But you can always tell when somebody's really done their research because it's the little things that they pick up on where you go, oh shoot, okay, no, these yeah. guys definitely had. They definitely had some folks letting them know. Yeah, and so, it is cool. So yeah, so like when I was assigned to do the uh, the, the the random name generator, like I basically was calling people all over the place who came from different backgrounds to tell me what would like what would make, surprise you. Like if, if somebody actually got names from your background or your culture correct in a game, oh, what would that nice. look like? What experience would you have that would make it feel like they'd done their research? And and I got some <laughs> lot of really interesting things. Like my my friend Serena told me all about these. Uh, I forgot I forgot the word for them, but there are these nicknames that they use in, in different uh, several different places in southeast asia where it has nothing to do with your first name has nothing to do with your last name it's it's a it's an it's a fairly arbitrary name that's given to somebody in addition to their given name when they're very young and they use it throughout their life and it's actually got sort of like um originally like uh so like religious significance but now it's just it's, it's a tradition for, for a lot of people yeah. and so we've got that system in the game so that like people who come from certain parts of southeast asia there's a chance that they're going to have an additional nickname on top of all of their uh other stuff because that's what my friend serena told me was uh was 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 correct and so you know that's awesome we, we went around trying to find that you know for as many places we could get uh, in the car a perfect, a perfect example of something that you know has gone completely over my head <laughs> but but so my it's so my hope is that like there will be just a tiny handful of players who notice those names being used and and, and oh, it's you just made that somebody's day with people. that yeah. <laughs> yeah somebody was playing this game and like you made their day but it's it's also going to be really it's because I'm working in an area where I don't have a lot of personal uh, knowledge. Yeah, it's going to be really easy for me to get it wrong too. Like there's this one example where um, uh, you know we've got uh, a guy working on the team working on the team who uh, is originally from Mexico, and I asked him you know for his advice uh, in, in coming up with you know, names for for people with Spanish language backgrounds, and so he came up so he he directed me uh, to find a whole bunch of uh, whoa feral. Uh, a whole bunch of uh, Mexican nicknames that were great. I mean, things that I never would have come up with. Things that where an English speaker wouldn't e wouldn't even recognize that this nickname is, is related to the uh, to the given name, and it was amazing. But I put it on all of the Spanish language backgrounds, not just the Mexican backgrounds. And so then we had somebody uh. who was from Spain vetting all of our names and they were looking through this nickname list and they're like what are all these names what and it was like giving like big red marker through everything it was like these are not real names where did you get these names i'm like oh i got them from mexico and you are not from mexico and so i so i ended Oops. up taking that name list and shortening it saying okay this is the mexican name list this is the everywhere else that speaks spanish uh sort of core name list and yeah. then i also s subdivided that into you know so that if you're from say uh, if a character is from, say, the Philippines, where a lot of the names are Spanish, a lot of the last names are not. And uh, you've got to make sure that, you know, that, that that lines up completely differently from names from Cuba versus names from Spain versus names from Mexico. So, yeah, so that was very easily almost a really bad mistake that I made. And I'm sure there yeah. are some that also got into the game that I haven't discovered yet. So, you know, out there, let me know if you find uh, <laughs> a problem in the name list. I'm, you know, I'm not sitting here thinking that I've gotten it all right. Uh, if anything, uh, I've just made a start, and I'm sure there's tons more I could learn. Either you got uh, coffee on you by any chance? I haven't been paying attention oh, to my fatigue, and... I don't have any on me right now. That's all right. I'll probably look. We can, we, can, we can jump in the car and go down to the Shaggy Jack's espresso stand. <laughs> That's true. That's probably there. That's fine. That or, you know, that or the base, because it's just, my, uh, my character here is too worn out. So, I need oh, to take wow. some coffee. I'm eventually oh, going to have to switch. Did we just start the car right next to the uh, other car and it, the physics went crazy? Yeah. Nice. Game is perfect. Game is perfect. <laughs> take a detour up to the base if you don't mind, Grant, because that'll be easier for me anyways. I'm going to have to yeah, switch this that. character one way or another. We're so close anyways. Yeah, so it looks like we're actually starting to uh, get close to the end. So, real quick, uh, for anybody who joined us very late, I should put up the Stack Up banner again and, and point out that StackUp.org is an amazing charity for active duty soldiers, for veterans, for anybody who could benefit from sort of the uh, communal and, uh, and therapeutic power of video games. Um, 
and so Dave Krause here is uh, is is a, a representative uh, from there, and so we just really want a lot of people to be aware of this charity and the good work that it does, and maybe go to stackup.org and see if you can contribute and get involved. We've had a few people in the chat who are really interested in not just donating money, but like starting local yeah, stacks. Yeah, donating and... some of their time, and yeah, which which is incredible, right? Like, yeah. uh, time is the only it's the only currency you can't ever get back. You know? <laughs> yeah, so if somebody true. tells me they want to they want to spend their time doing something for stack up that's that's a pretty awesome it's a pretty awesome commitment for somebody to make uh but yeah so i i definitely encourage anybody watching if you're if you're even the slightest bit curious as to you know what stack up is all about and you just want to kind of take a look and see if if we are who we say we are uh, i highly encourage you to go to the website uh www.stackup.org we keep it really simple uh we've got links all over the place i think on there for our discord community and uh every wednesday night i mean we we do an open meeting open to the public meeting with all of our staff uh from the ceo um down and we we talk about what we have going on we open the floor to questions so we, we really pride ourselves on on being transparent and being accessible so by all means go check out the website take a look and if you like what you see um either you're look maybe you're looking to make a donation by all means we'd certainly appreciate that um, we have that all set up through donor drive right now as part of our call to arms fundraiser or even if you're just looking to be a part of the community you just want to come hang out with the doors open and the community would love to welcome you with open arms so i've noticed that there is a feral uh down the road towards the uh, base that i'd eventually like to claim um Not i need i still need to yeah i still need to build up uh oh wait do we want to get in the black car or the uh we should trade we should trade you need to you need to go get some toolkits for you to take that <laughs> truck anywhere else okay let me see if we uh, let me grab some of the gas out of here uh, so yeah, so I figured just, we should do some stuff that will uh, that will net us some influence, so that I can eventually get myself a better base. I gotta drop a whole ton of stuff inside my base here, though. Well, okay, I've got the gas. Dave, next, time, next time you talk to the crew, please tell Stephen and Sketch and everybody there that I said hi. You know I will, man. I know some of them are in here, so you can. They're, they're hearing you right now, but for, well, for those Scott that aren't, I'll be sure to pass it along. If Sketch is here, I still have a big bone to pick with him for the 14 whiskey <laughs> he ordered me. But besides that, um, it's all good. <laughs> and I can't wait for we all get together again next year or whenever. Dude, yeah, whenever it happens, right? Whenever the world gets back to turning. I think uh, I was talking, I've been talking to a few different people about this, man. Like, whatever the, uh, whatever the first convention is, it's going to be absolutely insane it's <laughs> yeah. just gonna be whatever whatever the first gaming convention is it's everybody's just gonna be going like we're all gonna be going nuts and, and just having a great time together all right kill him nice that was anticlimactic i know it was got some influence though you're too good man you're too good <laughs> i'm using my red talent guy that's why i see that he's he's, he's a pro you don't got no circuitry, but you got Rick Talon. Over here just <laughs> yeah. and ferals. Yeah, I've just, I, I've only, I think I've only got the one Red Talon guy in my legacy community. I mean, my legacy pool. But I, uh, yeah, I totally had to bring him into this because if I was gonna try to, I usually am a standard zone player. I am not a dread or nightmare zone player. So, uh, so if I was gonna come here to the dread zone for a solo game for the first time, uh, yeah, I was gonna need to bring some of my best folks. I was gonna say, you know, I'm and I, you and I talked earlier, and I told you the same thing. I'm, I'm typically a standard zone player, but I think I might have been missing out. I think dread zone might be the, uh, that might be the, the level for me. I'm thinking, yeah, I'm finally getting to the point where in, in standard zone, I just will roll up on a bunch of zombies like nothing, <laughs> like, like it just doesn't and matter. Like my life's not like, at risk. It's like, nope, I'm good. I got this. Which can and be fun, fun if, if that's what I you want to do. You know, if you, if, if you're just, if you're there to relax, then great, do yeah. whatever relaxes you, right? But. Uh, all right, we got a comment. What are the what are the odds of incorporating a stack up T shirt into the game? I saw oh, that. Man. I didn't want to throw you under the bus there, Brent. Oh, throw me <laughs> under the bus, man. Um, I would, That's not crazy, yeah. I would go crazy. I'm sure there's some some legal hoops we'd have to go through, but I'm willing to to go toe to toe with Microsoft lawyers to make it happen. <laughs> hey, uh, the bathroom dude. utility closet has got boxes for you too. I will, you know, we'll sign off on that real quick, man. That'd be awesome. Yeah, the ever since Microsoft bought us, it's a little bit harder to just do stuff on a whim. Um, 
because there's a lot of people who have an interest uh, in. Yeah, you got you guys aren't in a, in a vacuum anymore. But uh, yeah, the old days were like, hey, let's you know, nobody was standing over my desk, so just put some stuff in. But now it's uh, there's a lot more bureaucracy to go through. But um, it's so far, it's largely been a benevolent bureaucracy. I gotta say, yep, like yeah. they've they've largely been very friendly to, to good things that we wanted to do, which which makes you know it's not that common for a corporation the size of Microsoft to want to do so many good things. Uh, yeah. They so they really really, really blown me away over the last few years. Like going to going to levels that it's like you don't go as hard as they've gone into accessibility, into you know doing these making these good guy moves. You don't go as far as they've gone, just you know, because you, you want You're thinking the of profits media or something, or something, right? Yeah, yeah they, totally. they're obviously there. There's enough folks uh, in Microsoft that are just genuinely motivated by doing good works, and it's been very, very inspiring. Because I, it was one of those things where I did not think I'd ever see something like that. But oh, well, I was gonna say too earlier. Uh, one of I, I, one of my favorite stories to tell about Brant is actually uh, it, uh -oh. it's favorite to me. I don't know. We'll, I don't know how exciting <laughs> it is, but about a year and a half, two years ago, Brant, we were at uh, we, were, we ran into each other at PAX West in Seattle. You, of course, had a bunch of swag for me to, to bring over to the stack up crew. And I had uh, this was it was not long after State of Decay 2 came out. And I remember telling you, hey, man, I'm actually, uh, I'm, you know, I'm getting ready to reinstall the game. You know, Sketch and I have been thinking about playing it again. You're like, no, 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 don't do it. And I was like, what? <laughs> We're working on something big. Don't install the game right now. It's going to be way better. Give me like a year. And I was like, so you're telling me not to play your game right now. And you're like, yeah, yeah, just hold off. It'll be so much better in like a year. We'll... I and then sure that, enough, yeah. yeah. I, and I guess it must have been about a year and a half ago. Because sure enough, about a year later, and uh, <laughs> Juggernaut Edition drops. <laughs> and you, you were right, man. Like, this is this. The, the Juggernaut Edition blew me away. I've yeah, been this. Yeah. Go ahead. Go ahead, Jeffrey. I'll well, just say, I've been the same way with my friends. Whenever, like, recently I've had a few friends uh, ask me, like, hey, I was just thinking of, start, of trying out State of K2. I'm like, the Juggernaut Edition just dropped. Thank you for waiting this long. <laughs> so, and we're still, you know, obviously there's still a lot of stuff we want to keep improving about the game, but it, it feels, it does feel like it's, you know, night and day compared to sort of where we started two years ago. We're coming yeah. we're coming up on our two-year uh, anniversary, too, which is going to be pretty fun. Was, this edition was definitely... Uh, closer to what we had envisioned when we started making State of Decay 2. And so um, we're just lucky and super excited that we were able to get an opportunity to go back and, and continue to make it better. So, yeah, I, uh, I'm i glad you guys uh, took heed and didn't, and didn't jump in because... <laughs> well, I mean, if I was going to get that advice from anybody and listen to it... <laughs> Don't put that in. Actually, you might have gotten me busted because uh, because um, I used to have to sneak all that swag out on the sly because it was for all the other people who went to the convention and I was like stealing handfuls to give them. You outed right. yourself. I didn't say you had stated the case swag for me. I just said you brought a bunch of swag. What other swag am I gonna I'm just it? saying, you could have held that up in court. I would have held up in a court of law. Well, yeah. if I'm busted, I'm going to have Megan call you to get the full story. You got <laughs> yeah, so we, 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 for a while, we actually had a huge stack in our in our kitchen at work of just all the old swag, the stuff that it was just, you know, it was it was not current anymore. We weren't really giving it out anymore. Yeah. And Brent and I, anytime we went to any kind of convention, we would just take piles of it and stuff it in our backpacks and just try to give it away to anybody we possibly could. Yeah. All right. Nice. Very nice. We're, uh, we're about out of it now. We, we were actually pretty effective. People would be standing in line for other games and were like, hey, have you heard this game called State of Decay? Here's a t-shirt. Enjoy. Nice. <laughs> that's it. That's how you do it right there. You get uh, you get the people to do, do your marketing for you. It was yeah. definitely brutal in marketing. I mean, that's how State of Decay made it the first time was people just talking to each other about it. And so we've continued that tradition a little bit. Well, it's but, I don't now, know if it's working, but it it worked on you know would have worked for me. Now that Megan's running the show for community with uh, Wonder, um, I I don't have as much access to the goodies as I used to because yeah. they got wise, they got wise yeah. to me sneaking in and stealing stuff. So they locked it down <laughs> on you, man. 
That you over you overplayed your hand. Well, they also right. they also are doing a lot of like I mean we 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 you know run giveaways and stuff like that on the stream. It's like they've actually got a lot of uh, we do contests. In fact, I think we have we've had <laughs> two contests going simultaneously lately. One to make uh, sort of uh, Zoom meeting backgrounds, and another one mm -hmm. to uh, to find all of the uh, the gnomes that Brant hid uh, throughout the throughout nice. the bases. And uh, yeah, so so they they need all of that uh, all that swag to give out as prizes. I got a present for Dave here. Oh, uh -oh. Hey, uh, just What'd you do? Just dropped it on the floor. Okay, let me come check it out. I don't, I don't see anything. Oh, there. It is. Oh, Where hey, cup oh, of coffee. Is that coffee? There's, a, coffee? Oh, there's a bag nice. containing a cup of coffee. And you know, Thank you so I got it out of a desk in a in a pharmacy or in a clinic, so it should be fine. It'll do the job. Well, it looks this like it's guy, four... This guy's all right for the time being, but that's, that never lasts too long, so... Well, it looks like it's 4 o'clock, so we should probably wrap things up. Uh, let me just get near the car again, just so that I uh, can, yeah, make sure that, uh, you know, that I, I remember where I am when I pick this game up later on. But yeah, I just want to say, thank you so much, Dave, for coming in here and, and being a part of this Dude. for, you know... Sharing I'll take it. That's a no-brainer for me, man. Thank you, guys. And Thank just, you very much. And just a reminder to everybody, stackup.org is where you want to go to find out more about you know the, uh, the charity that Dave's a part of. Uh, if, if there's any way that you know that you can contribute, whether whether it's monetarily, whether it's just learning about it, getting involved yourself, uh, there, there's you know there's always a call for for people to to help out you know veterans and active duty, duty soldiers that are out there. And so you know we're, we would really appreciate it uh, if you guys would check it out. And then I don't know, Dave, is there anything else that you wanted to say at the end of that? Um, let me think. Yeah, thank you guys, everybody in chat, for, for your questions, for hanging out, um, and for being so welcoming. I, re I really appreciate having the opportunity to be a part of it. Uh, and as I said before, you know, if you've got any questions, go to, go to the website, stackup.org. Um, you can reach out, out to us directly, uh, and you're going to get, like, if you, if you reach out with a question about the charity, uh, I, I am one of three people that you will hear back from. So we're, we're a small team, and we, we stay on top of our contact requests. And if you're curious to know what our call to arms fundraising event is all about, go to uh, I think it's I, I think it's stackup.donordrive.com. Um, I think, or it's donordrive.stackup. I, I hope that uh, Sam, if one of you guys are in chat or Perky or, or Deity, drop that donor drive link if you can. I don't know, but. It's uh yeah, go check us out on the Donor Drive website and you can see what our call to arms is all about. And appreciate you guys. Thank you. Oh yeah, well, well, thank you so much for being here. I appreciate what you guys do. You guys know that. Um I also uh am lucky that Dave is a friend of mine and I get to play with him once in a while. So thanks for stopping by with us, Dave. And any any time, man. You for you guys, uh, I'll I'll drop I'll drop on a dime to hang out well, with you guys. So give give everybody at Stack Up our best wishes and stay safe and wash your damn hands. And, um, and, uh, I hope to see you guys again soon. Appreciate you guys. Thank you again so much. Right. And so, uh, with that, we're going to take off, but thank you audience for being here and for, uh, you know, joining us for this journey through the beginning of, uh, <laughs> of one of my communities. And, uh, yeah, just thanks to everyone. This has been great. So we'll give this 15 seconds of, YouTube wrap up screen and then we'll get out of here. Awkward sign off. Oh hey, next week. Come back because we're actually gonna be able to share some new information about our next update. Was there anything else we missed? <laughs> <laughs> did we have did we have anything we were supposed to talk about? Uh, well we Van mentioned the notes.